In the Sheva Brachot, in the seven wedding blessings that we celebrate with a wedding couple, one of the blessings says, Tosasis v'takel ha'akora b'kibbutz boneha b'tocha b'simcha. Let us rejoice as we tell the barren woman of her children and their joy, that they may rejoice among and within her. The theme of a barren woman is a theme that we see over and over again in Torah. And in the 2,000 years of the rabbinic tradition, the akara, the barren woman that that blessing refers to, is not a woman, but the city of Jerusalem and the land of Israel. Taken away from her children, having her children taken away from her. And so the 29th of November, 1947, was the beginning of the process of the reunification of Israel with her children. And it is a wonderful coincidence that we reflect on that moment tonight as we read this week from Parsha Vayetze, which tells in part the story of Jacob and his two wives, Rachel and Leah. Rachel, the one who Jacob loved first and loved the most, and Leah, who spent her entire life trying to earn the love of her husband. Leah was blessed with many children, and Rachel became the barren woman who struggled to conceive and to bear children. What's interesting about all of this, if you look at the story of Leah, is the final son that she gives birth to is Yehuda. Yehuda, whose name comes from the word for gratitude, lehodot. Yehuda becomes the ancestor of every Jewish person in the world. After the fall of the temple and the, Assyri and, and the Assyrians invading the northern kingdom in the 8th century BCE, all that was left of the tribe was the tribe of Judah, which is why today we call ourselves not Israelites, but Judahites, Jews. Judaism comes from that tribe. And so as we think about what it means to come out of a sense of emotional starvation, the emotional starvation that Leah felt at the hands of her husband, Jacob, if we think about what it must have been like for Rachel to live alongside her sister who became in some ways a rival, they struggled for their mutual husband's affection. Of course, their father had everything to do with all of that. Simba. I guess I was right. I don't know that we learn from this story how oftentimes our moments of celebration, our moments of great gratitude, are felt all the more special, all the more sweet, when they were preceded by moments of difficulty, moments of sadness. The catharsis of triumph, or the honey that tastes good because it comes after the sting of the bee. The story of our people is one of both triumph and tragedy. The 29th of November, 1947, was a moment of great triumph, but we know that just a couple of Thanksgivings before that, our people were mired in the deepest and darkest moments in our history. And so as we move tonight to continue our celebration and our marking of this wonderful day in the life of our people, it gives us an opportunity to also reflect on our own journeys. What are those moments of great joy and celebration? And what were the struggles, the hardships, the energies we put into building it? And for those of us who may feel like we are mired in moments of struggle and challenge in our lives right now, what can we point our energies towards? What is the mountain that we can say we are climbing so that we can get there like our people turned the Akara of Mount Zion into the beautiful bride that is the city of Jerusalem and the state of Israel. I pray for each of you that on this Shabbat and the Shabbatot to come, you can find that sense of accomplishment, that sense of peace, and that sense of gratitude, as I wish you all a Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>